Jaron, welcome back to Seattle. Uh, obviously, uh, the first time didn't end quite the way that you hoped it would, but players regularly come back to join the Seahawks. For you, w- what was the main reason that you wanted to come back to Seattle now? Um, you know, uh, for me, you know, I've been away for two years and, I, you know, I kind of wanted to come back ahead of time. But, you know, when the opportunity presents itself, I want to take full advantage of it. And, um, you know, the culture, the coaching staff, it's the team that I'm familiar with, organization I'm familiar with. You know, I was drafted here. And, you know, of course, like when I got the opportunity to come back, I was in full fledged. I definitely wanted to come back. Bob? Um, yeah, Jaron. Yeah. Uh, welcome back as well. Do, do you have any regrets at all about how it ended the first time? I mean, it was sort of portrayed that they, you know, asked you to restructure your contract and everything and, and things like that. Or was it just, you know, kind of a business thing or? Yeah, you know, that's that's the part about this game. Um, it's a football side and a business side. And, you know, at that particular time, you know, uh, on my end, I just didn't feel like ends were meeting. Um, so, you know, we they had a decision to make. I had a decision to make. Um, obviously, I made that one. They had to make theirs. But, you know, it was no hard feelings. You know, it was just all business. And, you know, eventually it led me back. back to Miles Vita. So, hey, Jen, welcome back. And so looking forward, I know you haven't practiced. And just what are you seeing from outside about this Seahawks defense as you all get ready for, you know, the draft and OTAs and those kind of things? Yeah, well, um, I think, you know, they're putting together a defense that's going to be stout, that can play fast and play physical. And, you know, the guys in the back can cover. And, you know, the way we're building up front, you know, we can stop running and rush the passer. Um, but now, you know, it's the part of everybody coming together, jail together, getting to know each other. And then when the ground hits the running, you know, we got to put it all together and we got to play style defensive football. You know, we got to go back to the old Seahawks defense. Michael, Sean. Hey, Jaron, just now you said got to go back to the old Seahawks defense. What, is, what does that mean specifically? Oh, um, you know, just the standard of the Seahawks defense. Um, You know, when I came in, you know, I came in with, you know, Cam was still here, Earl, Sherm, Bobby, KJ, uh, Tava Rubin, Tony Daniels, Cliff, Mike, I probably already said them twice. But, you know, just, you know, that style of defense, you know, uh, when you played the Seahawks, you knew that you was playing a dominant defense. And that's what we got to come with. We got to bring the season. They got to know that, you know, we're coming to play hands down. There's no offense and buzz about it that you have to play all four quarters. Before you left, what impact did Clint Hurt have on your game? Um, you know, he had a major impact on my game. Uh, he came in, uh, he had coached about four years before I left. Um, Clint is a great coach, uh, even greater person. And, you know, when you build that relationship with somebody and somebody who helps you grow as a person, as a man, um, it's hard to break that. And, you know, so just being back with him is just another plus, being back with the guy who helped shape me into the football player that I am in the league. Um, it's just great. It's just a great feeling. Were there parts of your game specifically that he helped develop? Oh, every part of my game. You know, the coach is supposed to elevate you in every part of the game there is. You know, that's the point of, you know, them being your position coach. And um, he did just that. And so, you know, I took some of those things and, you know, try to use them. Everybody got different coach styles. Sometimes you got to learn different ways, uh, different coaches coach. But, you know, being back in something I'm familiar with as far as drills and practices and how individual periods would go, I think is uh, another milestone, a great one. Thank you. Brady. Hi, Jaron. Uh, welcome back to Seattle. Can you help us understand what uh, what kind, what positions you played the last couple of years and, and what your roles were on those defenses? Yeah, so in Kansas City, uh, you know, Chris played more of the three taking. I played more of those, which I really, you know, haven't played since my rookie year, my second year in the league. Um, but um, in Green Bay, you know, we played three, four defense, and I was a three, uh, three technique, big in the big defensive end um, when needed. Um, so I'm well equipped with playing in any kind of scheme that would be if we decided to change it up, play a four, three, or go to a three, four. Um, I feel like you know now I fit in any one of those. And you talked about wanting to come back, and we've heard that from other players who have left Seattle, and then some of them do come back, some of them don't. But what is it about the Seahawks organization that that makes guys want to come back? 
Um, I think is, you know, the Seahawks, they let you be you as a person. And, you know, to them, I think it's just more than football. Some organizations, it's strictly football, and they want you to be certain, certain type of way, act a certain way, look a certain way, dress a certain way. Um, and here, they just let you be you. You know, they let your personality show um, in the most respectful way. And uh, I feel like, you know, you should be you as a person and, and be free. And, you know, you can play better that way when you're, when you're free as a person, when you can express yourself as a person and who you are, um, which I think everybody has the right to do. And, you know, those type of things, along with the culture, with the coaching staff, you know, and you have fun around there. You have fun. You have a good time. Like, you actually enjoy being at work. All those things accumulate to just wanting to be there. That's the thing. You got to want to be there. No, not I need to be here. You got to want to. So it's a place I want to be and I wanted to come back to. Thank you. Bob? Um, yeah, Jared, how did, how did it work out anyway? Did, did they just call you out of the blue or, or uh, you know, were you expecting them to contact you when free agency began? Uh, or? You, know, I, you know, I had no clue, you know, but when free agency started, um, we got the call. And, you know, there was a couple other teams, too. And I just took my time with it because, I mean, I didn't want to make a decision based on what I knew I wanted to do. So I wanted to make the best decision for me. Um, so, you know, I took my time and they called and we waited out. Me and my agent weighed out all the options. We sat out, we went through everything. And overall, you know, just as far as playing, what I'm going to be playing, how I'm going to be used, you know, all those different type of schemes, all the different type of things playing the factor in. Just the icing on the cake was me already being in Seattle, me already playing for this organization, me already knowing people in the organization. So, you know, it almost became after a while, after negotiating with a couple of the teams, it just became a, you know, not a factor that I was going to come back, you know, to Seattle. And, and one more to piggyback off Brady's question about how you uh, played in Green Bay. John Schneider said that was pretty similar to how what a lot of, Seahawks have kind of moved to the last year or two how you were used in Green Bay. Does that, I mean, does that seem like that would be pretty similar? Or? Uh, yes, uh, I think it will, you know, in that type of scheme. And, you know, when we get in and get rolling, you know, I think I'll fit in perfect. You know, like I said earlier, regardless of the scheme, three, four, four, three, whatever they want to play, you know, I know I'm going to fit in. And, you know, I think it's actually valuable too. Thank you. Corbin. Yeah, piggybacking off that question, Jaron, with the scheme change that Seattle had last year, how do you see that specifically uh, impacting your responsibilities along the defensive line? Maybe there's going to be more two-gapping than what you did in your first time in Seattle. Uh, how do you envision it being different, or do you think it's going to be fairly similar to that first time in Seattle? Uh, you know, I think it'll be similar because um, I go, I can go all the way back to Alabama. You know, we played kind of that system in Alabama as well. Um, I'm very comfortable in it. And, um, you know, I don't think it would be any type of issue. And I think I could just slide in and fit perfect as long as we know, you know, the terminology that we're using and, you know, different type of other things or when we play in certain personnel. So, you know, just along with that, you know, I don't think it would be much of a difference. I think it would be fairly similar. Greg. Hi, Jan. Welcome back. Uh, with what Brady asked you about why guys come back to the Seahawks, how much of that is Pete Carroll and what he establishes and what's your relationship with him? Oh, um, you know, it's great. You know, Pete is a great coach. Um, you know, like I said before, I, you know, that's where I grew up at, you know, as a person, as a player and as a man. And um, just a chance to get back. You know, Pete is a great coach. He wanted, he's one of the better, you know, funner coaches to play for around the league. Um just like I said earlier, you know, he lets, he lets you be you. you know, the coaches have an amazing personality as well. The energy around there is great. You know, just I can go on for days about that. You know, just a chance to get back and play for Pete. You know, uh, yeah, everybody got things they want to do. And if we were to make a run, to make a deep run in the playoffs or whatever, Subo, I don't want to talk too far ahead because, you know, we got to work for everything. But, you know, what other, what other better place than do it in Seattle? What did he tell you when you left with the business side of it catching up to you last time? Um, nobody really wanted to part ways. Um, you know, the door is always open. Uh, that's one thing I knew. And, uh, you know, just however everything falls down, business side of football, however you can't fall down, who the guys they like or, 
guys that they feel like they need, you know, that's on them. And, um, you know, we just knew, like, when I left, I knew it would always be a possibility of me coming back. It was just when, you know, that time, you know. But, you know, they had to move on. I had to move on and eventually led us back to here, or back to me being a 12 again. Brady? Jaron, this one is a little off topic, but uh, when you were younger player in Seattle, how, how did you see some of the veterans on defense hold younger players accountable? Oh, uh, yeah. It's funny because I tell younger guys the story a lot. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to start with this. I used to watch them guys all the time. Even when they didn't know I was watching, I used to watch and try to pick, pick things that they were doing as a pro to try to implement into my preparation and, you know what I'm saying, taking care of my body and stuff. And it's funny because I remember we were playing San Francisco. This was probably my first year or second year, you know, coming as a rookie with a whole veteran defense. They had a, you know, they had to trust me that, and they had a, you know, a lot of expectation for me as well. And um, so it was just one thing we had to do if it happened on a certain play. And Michael Bennett knew, everything before it's about to happen. And so, you know, I'm young, so I'm still trying to learn. But basically, I was in the way of him making a play. <laughs> and I was supposed to do something that he already told me I was supposed to do, and I just need to do it fast enough. And then, you know, I remember, you know, he kind of, you know, got on me about it. And basically, they were saying, you know, if they can't trust you, they can't play with you, which is true. You know, because we're pros, you know, we have to be prepared on game day and do our homework at home to be out to be able to go out and perform at our best. And so, you know, I just take those things and, you know, that's a quick story that everything that I learned and that I can know. And so now I will pass it on, you know, to the other guys because I know for a fact, especially being younger, you have to be accountable. And that's everybody. Everybody, regardless of first year in the league or 12th year in the league, you gotta be accountable. You know, that but that's the main thing I learned, you know, as a young pro. Uh, do you feel like you're at a position in your career where you can be that guy that holds younger guys accountable? Uh, absolutely. You know, I've been in this league. This is going on my eighth year now, and I've learned a lot, you know, positive and negative of that, pros and cons that I can tell these young guys and kind of help them try to make the right decisions and be the best player they can. And I can definitely do that for sure. Thanks. Mas Vida? Yeah. Hey, Jared. Going back to the exit interview, without going specifics, you touched a little bit about this, the door always being open. What is it that the Seahawks say or make you feel in that the door will always be open if you lead the team? Oh, well, you know, like I said earlier, when it, when you get to the people in the building, it gets beyond, you know, football. Like, I've been in a relationship with the equipment guys. I've been in a relationship with, the 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 cafeteria staff, I built a relationship, you know, with the weight with the weight training coaches. So, you know, just everything for me personally on my end was just built around being family oriented. I was really comfortable there and I felt like I was at home. And you know, that's just the organization how it speaks for itself. And when you get stuff like that, guys like that, and when once I, when I say this, which is huge, is a team or organization letting you be you. That is very key because you get to be yourself, you know, and without without being judgmental, without, you know, people judging you or questioning you or why you're doing this or why you're wearing that, why you look like that. They know that you're a good person on the inside. And they are good people on the inside as well. And as long as you come to work and do what you're supposed to do and stay out of the way, you know, those are the best combinations you can have, especially in a professional league, dealing with a professional organization. Thank you. 